gonna be some of you want to yell. He's on camera saying this what I'm saying. He's literally on camera. Saying, yo, he gave me talk. He gave me no, because you're not letting me talk. So if you want to act like a little kid, I could do that too. Right, it, was ahead, right, turn. Right, right. it was already my turn, and you still talking over me. And it was my turn. When you talk, I don't interrupt. When I talk, you do interrupt. But I saw Errol Spence Jr. on camera in 2018 say that Al Heyman gave him four names. Keith Thurman, Sean Porter, Mikey Garcia, and Manny Pacquiao, which subsequently became Yoda Denny That was in 2018. In 2019, he chose to fight Sean Porter when he could have fought Terrence Crawford. You could have fought him then, but you chose Sean Porter. In 2021, you chose Ugas. You could have fought Crawford because Ugas was under orders to fight Stanionis. You, TGB, and Ugas petitioned the WBA so that he would be next instead of Terrence. If you the A-side and you the big fish, the onus to do the fight is on you. And the claim that you just made that, oh, he pulled out of the fight, that's false too. Terrence Crawford said they pushed the fight date into 2023 so he told al Heyman himself okay if it's going to be next year then i'm going to take a keep busy fight this year and al Heyman told him according to terence crawford well if you do that then he's going to go on to fight keith thurman and make seven figures that's per terence crawford now unless you know more about the deal than terence crawford he didn't pull out of anything they told him the fight's going to be this year so why would fight navanese and last year affect the fight it was going to be this year anyway. Is it my well, turn now? Uh, go ahead. All right, cool. So, everything that you just said, right, you talked about Earl Spence fighting Mikey Garcia. Well, guess what? When Earl Spence was fighting Mikey Garcia, neither Earl Spence nor Terrence Crawford had ever been on pay-per-view. As a matter of fact, around the same time that, that Earl Spence announced the goddamn Mikey Garcia fight, Terrence Crawford was fighting a mere motherfucking cone, bro. So how because you he couldn't like get Earl Spence fight. So you're not gonna let me talk. Okay, go ahead. All right. So so how you ducking the men? Then you complain that Earl Spence is fighting Sean Porter. So I guess when a champion is fighting another champion, now we call him that a duck. So I guess mm-hmm. fucking Canelo Alvarez was ducking motherfucking Caleb Plant because he fought Billy Joe Saunders first. I guess that's what we're doing. I guess Alexander Usyk was ducking Breedis because he fought the dude from Paul and Glowacki first. Like, bro, when you fight other champions, when, when we start calling that shit a duck? Then you brought up the Danny Garcia shit, which I already explained to you, which is 100% fact. When Earl took the Danny Garcia fight, Terrence Crawford admitted out of his own mouth that he didn't even want the fight because he felt like he was in a lose-lose situation. And he said that if they offered him the fight, he wouldn't even take it. Then you brought up the Udinis fool guy, which I'll refer back to my last point. How the fuck can you duck somebody if you fight other champions? So I guess, I guess when, when Canelo Alvarez was fighting motherfucking Callum Smith, before he fought Billy Joe Saunders, he was ducking Billy Joe Saunders. Or when he fought Calvin Smith before he fought Caleb Plant, he was ducking motherfucking Caleb Plant. How the fuck are you ducking people if you fighting champions, bro? That's the last thing. Now, you use Terrence Crawford, and this is what we wanted to talk about for real, right? You use Terrence Crawford talking about the shit that he said about this whole negotiation shit. About them actually, now this is where the ducking shit really come in, right? This is what you was talking about. You talking about Terrence Crawford said this. Everything that you referenced was what Terrence Crawford said, right? Well, Terrence Crawford also said that Al Heyman was so goddamn stupid that he was negotiating with a lawyer that Terrence Crawford didn't even know. Somebody that he knew, no, no, nothing, knew, no, nothing upon. Some bullshit that you got to be a motherfucking English doctorate major to fucking understand. So, but we want to believe it, though. The same Terrence Crawford that went on Kate Abdo shit and said, I never said that being undisputed motivated me. I said being world champion motivated me. But yet and still, he did a motherfucking interview with Andre Ward where he did say, I want to be undisputed, and that's what motivates me at 147. So this same nigga that contradicts himself at every turn, oh, Earl Spence ducking me, he ducked me, he ducked me. Well, no, I know Earl wants to fight as bad as I do. It was the politics that messed up the fight from happening. Oh, blame Earl, blame Earl, blame Earl. Oh, no, it was Bob Abram that couldn't get me the fights that I wanted. This same nigga that run around this bitch contradicting himself at every motherfucking turn, lying and shit, basically saying that the dude that put on the Michael Jackson concert, the dude that did the motherfucking Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao fight all these big events in boxing, Al Heyman was stupid enough to negotiate with a lawyer that Terrence Crawford didn't even know. That's who you trusted. And then furthermore, you talking about Terrence Crawford said that they wanted to push the fight back to 2023. Well, Imanti Stanley said that he was supposed to be the co-main event. The same dude they had to pay to step aside 
said that he was supposed to be the co-main event, and that's why he was pissed off that his fight date kept getting pushed back. You know the guy that puts up the budget for the fight? You know the Showtime executive, Steven Espinosa? He said that he had all of that shit pertaining to 2022 and 2023, and that he could have fought in 2022, but he kept asking for more shit. And if he really didn't duck out the fight, and the fight was for 2023, and he agreed to everything like y'all claim he did. If you agreed to everything, and all you wanted was a fight in 2022, why didn't you just do a Tank Davis and Ryan Garcia? Why didn't you just go ahead and agree to fight early in 2023 and take your little tune up in 2022 then? Why did you pull all the way out of negotiations and take a fight with David Avenesia, and now you're talking about we got to go back to the drawing board? Now you're talking about we got to go ahead and, 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 and renegotiate. Why you got to renegotiate some shit? The fuck is you talking about, bro? Try to rebuttal that. Go ahead. It's your okay, turn. you gave me a lot to rebuttal, so I'm going to have to take my time. For starters, you can't compare Canelo Alvarez fighting... You don't have to take your time, but you can't fuck with it. Oh, okay, okay. Is is it my turn? Now, one, you brought up Canelo Alvarez fighting another champion instead of Caleb Plant. You must not know that he went to Caleb Plant before he went to Callum Smith, and Caleb is the one who told him to circle back. That's why he fought Callum. Then he went back to him after he beat Callum, and he told him again, yo, can we fight now? And Caleb told him the same thing. That's how he ended up fighting Billy Joe Saunders. That parallel doesn't even make sense because Canelo actually fought Caleb. Errol hasn't fought Crawford. So you can't even use that as an example, not that it matters, because Caleb wanted to be last. The reason Canelo didn't fight him first wasn't because he was ducking him, it's because Caleb wanted to be last. So that's a moot point that doesn't make any sense. You brought up Usyk, and the only reason Usyk ended up fighting people ahead of Mavis Breedis is because it was a fucking tournament. They wasn't picking and choosing who they were going to fight. That was the World Boxing Super Series. It was a tournament format. The semi-quarterfinal, the quarterfinal, all that bullshit, that didn't boil down to choice. So all those parallels that you use mean dick. The second thing, well, wasn't it Errol Spence Jr. on camera who categorized Sean Porter as easy? Didn't he say that's the easy, I'm going to go the easy route and I'm going to fight Sean? That's what he said on camera. So if you choose to fight the guy that you call easy, that must mean you swerving him because he's more difficult. On camera, Errol Spence Jr. said, I'm going to go the easy route and fight Sean. That's what he said on camera. There's no debate that he said that. It's on camera. He was wearing a red hoodie like me when he said that. He said, I'm going to go the easy route and fight Sean. Well, if you're choosing to fight Sean instead of fighting Bud, when you could fight Bud, you know, you the big fish, you the A-side, all that cool stuff. You could fight Bud. You chose the easier fight. You chose Mikey Garcia. You chose Sean Porter. You chose Ugas. You chose all of that because we know the pound for pound fighter, the more difficult fight with the more difficult fighter is Terrence Crawford. Furthermore, you brought up the negotiations between Terrence Crawford and the, the more recent set of negotiations between Terrence Errol and Al. And Terrence, in his own words, said that I told Al if. We're not going to fight this year. I'm going to take a keep busy fight. Errol Spence Jr. late last year said, okay, he'll spin the block. Has he spun the block? No, you fighting Keith Thurman at 154. You didn't spin the block. You didn't circle back to revisit negotiations for the fight. You going into a whole nother fight with a whole nother fighter that you said you would never fight. It seems that the only time somebody's contradicting themselves is when it's Terrence. But if I bring up Errol saying, I would never fight Keith Thurman. You bought the fighter. You said you would spend the block. You didn't spend anything. You didn't re-enter negotiations. And when you look at the fact that they're supposed to now be fighting in what, May? May? You could have rescheduled the Crawford fight for May. You didn't even bother to revisit negotiations with Terrence Crawford. But y'all got that Keith Thurman fight done in a jiffy. The same way y'all got the Ugas fight done in a jiffy. After Terrence Crawford versus Sean Porter, he was a network and promotional free agent. You could have wanted the negotiations with him then. You didn't. You chose to petition the WBA to allow Ugas to fight you, even though Ugas was already ordered to fight Stanionis. He had his own business, but you tried to get him out of that Stanionis so he could fight you and so you could not fight Terrence. I didn't do nothing. He dropped off. I didn't do nothing. Y'all see? Y'all see what I'm talking about? I didn't do nothing. He dropped off. Well, come on, KO. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? I didn't do nothing.
funny story. When Jeff Horn won the WBO title, Errol Spence Jr. said he wants Horn next. When Terrence got the title, it became about cleaning up his side of the street. Same as Ryan Garcia with Devin Haney. When George Cambosos beat Teofimo Lopez, Ryan wanted George. But when Devin beats George, belts don't matter. Come on, KO. Where'd you go? Where'd you go, KO? If they're both saying the same thing, how is only one a duck? I'll tell you how it's a duck. Errol, in his own words, said, First it was, let him get a belt first, then I'll fight it. Then it became, I have to clean up my side of the street. Then it became, Sean Porter, uh, uh, what is it, uh, the easy route? Easy route Errol, that's where that came from. He categorized Sean Porter as being the easier fight, so why wouldn't he take it? Those are his own words, not mine. You could have fought Terrence Crawford right after the Sean Porter fight. He was a network and promotional free agent. At the beginning of last year, Tim Smith, the VP of Communications at the PBC, said they hadn't even made Terrence Crawford an offer yet. What took them so long? They didn't start negotiating for Terrence until the second quarter in May. They literally offered Canelo Alvarez a, a Errol Spence Jr. fight. That's per Tom Brown. He said they offered Canelo Alvarez three names, Benavidez, Charlo, Errol. If you were trying to fight Terrence, why are they putting you up for, for Canelo if it was your goal to do a Terrence Crawford fight? I don't know where you went. I think his phone died. Errol has spun more cars than blocks. I'm waiting for him to come back. Here's the link again. I'll pick up where I left off. And immediately after, Porter versus Crawford. Immediately after Porter versus Crawford, we all know that Terrence Crawford announced he's a network and promotional free agent. Errol Spence Jr. did not pursue the fight with him then. The fight that he did pursue was an Ugas fight. KO tried to compare that to Canelo fighting Smith instead of Plant or Saunders instead of Plant when it was Caleb that told him to come to spin back around. That's the reason those fights happened in that order. It was because Caleb wanted to be last, not because Canelo was avoiding anybody. The first guy that Canelo went to was Caleb Plant, the first guy. And I've already mentioned Usyk and Breedis and how that's a tournament format. That's not the same as Errol and Terrence. That's quarterfinal. I heard everything you, you said, bro. Just let me know my turn. All right, uh, it's still my turn. I, I let you go for like 10 minutes without saying a word. Um, as far as Terrence and Errol, which is the subject at hand, you didn't have to fight Ugas in that order. You had a choice. You chose Ugas the same way you didn't have to fight Sean in that order. You chose to fight Sean in that order. Your excuse was that because Terrence was with top rank, you couldn't do a fight with him, but we know that's bullshit. Top rank did a fight with Wilder and Fury. They weren't involved in the first fight, granted, but they were involved in between the first fight and the second fight, and they did the fight. So why couldn't you use that same deal structure to do a fight between you and him? Because you didn't want to. You said Al gave you four names. He gave you Keith, he gave you Mikey, he gave you Danny, and he gave you Pacquiao. You didn't get to fight Pacquiao even though you were supposed to, though all the same. That proves that it was always their plan to put distance between Errol and Terrence because they gave you four names. They had a four-fight plan for you, and not a single name in there was the name of Terrence Crawford. When it boiled down to choice, you could have chose Crawford over Ugas, but you wanted Ugas, even though Ugas was already under orders to fight Stanionis. He should have been busy with that. You wanted Ugas, not Crawford. The T U T G B, y'all petitioned the WBA to get Ugas to, to get Stanionis to step aside so you could fight him instead. Why not Terrence? Why is it that when push comes to shove, you always go the other way? So we see this latest set of negotiations, which only kicked off after they already offered Errol to Canelo. 
Tom Brown, the TGB promotion, said they offered Canelo Alvarez three names after the plant fight. David Benavidez, Jermall Charlo, and Errol Spence Jr. They hadn't even entered into negotiations with Terrence yet. They didn't enter negotiations with Terrence until May, the second quarter of the year. In the first quarter of the year, Tim Smith said, well, we haven't made Terrence an offer because we don't want to insult him. Meaning, y'all haven't even started talking yet, but they already offered you to Canelo, though, right? You were option for Canelo. What I see is Terrence was a last resort, if anything. It was a last resort. And the deal that you offered him, he offered you offered him a deal where he's not guaranteed any money. But you had guaranteed money for Ugas. You had guaranteed money for Mikey. You had guaranteed money for Sean Porter. You guarantee every other fighter you fight money, but you don't offer this guy nothing. You're negotiating in bad faith. It's very obvious. Up until this point, when have you ever heard of an Errol Spence Jr. opponent not being guaranteed any money? And I'm supposed to believe that that's Terrence's fault? You're supposed to be the A-side. You're the one structuring a deal. You and Al, you're the ones... Um, determining all those factors and when it's Terrence, y'all don't offer him no money, but when it's everybody else you can offer them money, you offered him a deal you didn't think he would accept so that Errol would move on and when he doesn't accept it, you're gonna hang it around his neck and try to make it his fault when it was never your intention to do this fight, how could it have been they offered you to Canelo how was it your intention to do this fight the only reason that we're even here is because Canelo didn't waste time on Errol your turn. This is child's play. So he offered. They offered him. A, they offered Canelo to Earl because it's the same way that when Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence were talking all this shit. If you get a Manny Pacquiao opportunity, if you get a motherfucking Canelo Alvarez opportunity, you take that shit, bro. Those are two dudes that no matter what, no matter who you are, I don't give a fuck. People try to act like Earl is the face of boxing. That shit ain't true. People try to act like it may be Tank. That ain't true. Tank, the biggest name from 140 down. But the biggest name in the sport that ain't a heavyweight is Canelo Alvarez. And at the time that, it, that Manny was in there, it was Manny too. So if you Terrence Crawford and you Earl Spence, they fans wanted them to get a Manny fight. If you Earl Spence and you got a chance to fight Canelo Alvarez, anybody taking that shit, bro. Anybody taking that shit because I don't give a fuck what you say. Earl versus Bud ain't the biggest fight. If Terrence versus Canelo happened... That's the biggest motherfucking fight. That's the biggest bag Terrence will ever get. If Earl versus Canelo happens, that's the biggest fucking bag. That's the biggest bag that Earl will ever get. You ain't ducking no motherfucker for trying to fight Canelo. Anybody in their right mind is going to try to fight Canelo. That's the point on that. The Ugas shit. What you guys fail to realize is that the only reason that Ugas became an option was because Earl got hurt. The real fight was Earl versus Manny Pacquiao. That's the fight they got signed. That's the fight that they were trying to do. But Earl got a detached retina, so he couldn't he couldn't take the fight. And when he got the detached retina, he didn't just pull Ugas out the blue. The nigga told all y'all, bro, y'all just don't be listening, and you only hear what you want to hear. He said, that's all right. I'm coming back stronger. I want the winner. I'm fighting the winner of the fight. That's what he said, bro. So after Manny Pacquiao lost, and it's clear that the PBC wanted Manny to win, because for the life of me, somebody tell me how the fuck score that fight 115-113 in favor of Ugas. Ugas put pause on Manny Pacquiao ass. That fight was not that close at all. So, But but Ugas got the victory. And so Earl went right through what he said he was going to do. And you keep making this argument that you are ducking people by fighting other champions. I guess motherfucking Josh Taylor, since you didn't like my other example, we got more. No issues. I guess Josh Taylor was ducking motherfucking Jose Ramirez and Maurice Hooker when he fought motherfucking um, Regis program. I guess that shit is a duck. I like, like I don't understand this logic. Is it my turn? Is it my turn? Motherfuckers are ducking people when they fight other champions. Then you talked about the no guarantee shit. And I thought that we wanted to see fights here, bro. I thought we was fighting fans and shit. So you want to complain and you want to be okay with a man pulling out of a fight with no guarantee when the nigga that he fighting didn't have no motherfucking guarantee either. But he signed his shit. He agreed to his shit. He had no guarantee, just like Terrence had no guarantee. So who gives a fuck, bro? Okay, move it along, bro, because you're carrying on for 10 minutes. All right, for starters, for starters, because because you you, 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 you jump in, you jump into a lot of different things. You, 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 you can't handle what I'm saying so much, you're going to cut me off again. I got you. It's all good. I know. 
Okay, it's my turn. You brought up, you brought up, Josh. You brought up. No, no, no. It's my turn, bro. It's my turn. It's my turn, bro. It's my turn. 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 It's my and what none of y'all can get around is that this man, Terrence Bud Crawford, had two motherfucking contracts. He had a contract on this plate to fight undisputed versus Earl Spence and become the first man ever to be undisputed in two separate weight classes in the four belt era. The only person to do that, and I know you're going to hate this because you really don't like so much, the only other person to do that was Clarissa Shields when she put paws on Savannah Marshall. Or he could fight a motherfucking voluntary defense against a motherfucker who got knocked out by a motherfucker that he already knocked out. Those were his two options. I signed to fight Earl Spence, or I signed to fight David Avenese. This okay, motherfucker looked turn. at both of those contracts, and he, and he chose to fight motherfucking David Avenese. Then okay, it's, 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 my, it's my turn, bro. It's, it's my turn, bro. You got, you, you got it's nerve. my turn, bro. You it's my turn. Nerve. It's my turn. It's my turn. Bro, let me You're saying it. nothing. No, you you literally... You, all right, all right. So let me address I this. Bro, all right, it's my turn, bro. It's my turn. What you want? 20 minutes? It's my turn. It's my turn. What do you want? 20 minutes to talk nonstop? It's my turn. I know it's hard, but... Because I'm out here doing you dirty on your own shit. Let me finish, bro. Then you talked about Earl Spence talking and negotiating in bad faith and his team negotiating in bad faith. I got a question for all the people in the chat because I know y'all dick riding, but y'all won't go hear me on this. This motherfucker, Terry Crawford, out of his own mouth, was talking to the PBC at the same time that he was talking to BLK Prime. He said he met BLK Prime before May, but then he started talking to him in May. Now, maybe y'all think they were talking about dating. Maybe y'all think that they were talking about how, going out to dinner or some shit. But if you're being real with yourself, you know what the fuck that they were talking about. During this time, he admitted out of his own mouth that he told BLK Prime everything that he was doing with PBC. While telling PBC out of his own mouth that he told them nothing that he was doing with BLK Prime. So you y'all answer me this question. How the fuck are you negotiating in good faith and you really trying to fight Earl Spence if you were doing a deal with BLK Prime and letting them know everything PBC is offering you and not telling PBC that they got a competing offer that they got to go against to try to get that fight. You are telling the people everything that you really want to do business with. I'm on here with Ring IQ right now. And if I'm talking to fucking Ring IQ, if I'm, I'm talking to Ring IQ and I'm talking to, I don't know, sporting icons in this motherfucker, and I tell sporting icons everything that I'm doing with Ring IQ, about a debate, hey, sporting icon. Ring IQ said I can come to his platform. Ring IQ gonna give me $50. Ring IQ gonna do this, he gonna do that. But then I go back to Ring IQ and I don't tell him shit. I don't tell him nothing that sporting icons is offering me. Ain't it safe to say that I really wanna do the deal with sporting icons? Cause I'm being, here go these words I like to use, transparent with sporting icons, but I'm not being transparent with Ring IQ. This nigga Terrence Bud Crawford was asking the PBC for shit that he wasn't willing to give his goddamn self. And y'all give him a pass for it. Y'all act like it's all cool. That man is duck. I don't give a fuck what y'all tell me. Now tell me what motherfucking lie I just told. I bet you can't. All right, all right. You just talked for like 20 minutes jumping from point to point. For starters, you did the same stupid shit you did before. Regis Prograde did not avoid Jose Ramirez by going into the World Boxing Super Series because he was in negotiations to fight Jose first. Both teams decided to part amicably, all right? But Regis wanted to fight. When he saw he couldn't get Jose Ramirez in the ring for an order from the WBC, that's when he decided to go into the World Boxing Super Series. You did the same silly shit with Regis that you just did with Usyk and, and, and the other shit and the Canelo shit. The reason that Errol is avoiding Terrence by fighting another champion is you had a choice. You had a choice. You didn't have to fight Ugas. Ugas was busy. You chose to fight Ugas. Even though you knew he was under orders to fight Stanionis, you still chose him over Crawford. The same way you still chose Danny Garcia over Crawford. The same way you still chose Sean Porter over Crawford. You talked about what Terrence Crawford said in 2020, and you didn't even use the whole quote. In 2020, ahead of the Danny Garcia fight, which is when those quotes are from, the reason Terrence said that is because Errol was just in a car accident. 
Nobody knew what he was going to look like. So he said, I'm in a lose-lose because if you fight him off the car accident, people may not give you credit for it. So he was okay with Errol fighting Danny. That's the quote you're using, and you're deliberately misquoting him. You're also fudging the timeline because that's the only reason he said it. It's because between 2019 and 2020, December of 2020, Errol hadn't fought. He wasn't even medically cleared to spar much less fight. So Terrence said, yeah, I wouldn't mind if he takes a tune-up first because if I fight him next, I'm in a lose-lose. You bring up, what's, what's, what's the other bullshit you brought up? You brought up that he was negotiating with two people at the same time in May of last year. Well, if you take that as Bud avoiding Errol Spence Jr., what do you call it when Tom Brown offers Canelo Alvarez Errol Spence before you even enter into negotiations? with Terrence Crawford. You're saying that because it's Canelo Alvarez, it's supposed to be different. No, it's not different. What I see is a pattern. You always choose to fight someone else instead of this guy. This guy was a last resort. It doesn't matter if it's Canelo, Pacquiao, Ugas, whoever. You're making a decision and your team is making a decision to fight someone else. You only fought, you was only negotiating with this guy because there was nobody else to negotiate with. There are no other money fights at or around your weight, but you had a choice. You could have fought him in 2019 instead of Porter. You could have fought him in 2020 instead of Danny. You could have fought him last year instead of Ugas. You chose that for yourself, and you can't compare that to Regis entering a tournament or Usyk entering a tournament or Canelo in what order he unified the titles in because those were tournaments, and Caleb is the one who wanted to be saved for last. That wasn't Canelo saving him for last. That was Caleb saving himself for last to ensure that the fight would happen on his platform. Better still, it was still Caleb. You can't compare that to Errol Spence Jr. willfully going the other way for the last five years. For the last five years, you had a choice. The first excuse was that he was on the wrong side of the street. Yeah, that's bullshit. Because if that were true, we would have never got Wilder versus Fury 2. The second thing was, oh, well, let me clean up my side of the street first. Okay, you did that. Why are you fighting Keith Thurman now? If your fight is getting pushed out all the way until May, why don't you just skip that and go for Terrence instead? You say you don't take tune-ups, right? Well, what do you think fighting a fighter that ain't fought but once in the last three years is? This is not 2017. Keith Thurman ain't no elite fighter. Why are you fighting him instead of Terrence? Why is it at 154 instead of 147? We all know what you're about to do. You're leaving the welterweight division like I said you would in 2018. You're not going to fight Terrence. You're not going to unify titles with him. And all this is, is you trying to save face. Because realistically, if it was your original plan to do the fight this year, it shouldn't matter if Terrence fights David Abanesian last year. What difference does it make? Y'all wasn't going to fight last year anyway. The plan was to do the fight this year, right? In the first or the second quarter. Then what do you care if he's tuning up with that guy? You say that Terrence is negotiating in bad faith because he was talking to Black Prime at the same time. Well, what the fuck do you call it that the PBC offered Errol to Canelo before they offered him to Terrence? It's obvious y'all wasn't trying to make the fight. Tim Smith. In his own words said, we don't even think this fight will make money. But you boo-boo you boo -boo the fool that think they want to make that fight when the VP of communications is telling you, we don't think that anybody's going to buy this fight. We think that people are going to steal it. And that's why we haven't made him a cash offer yet. We can't get him the kind of money that he wants because the numbers don't add up. But only boo-boo the fool think they were serious about making the fight. They offered him the Ugas. They offered him Canelo. But the last guy that they offered him the ter it is the Terrence. And you wondering why. It's kind of obvious that for a fight this size, an undisputed title fight, five years in the making, the offer... No guarantee? It's obvious you're not trying to do a fight like that. Because when have you ever seen a fight that size negotiated for no guarantee? It's a cover story, if it's anything, because I've never seen a fight like that negotiated under that pretense. Let's talk about Ward versus pretense. Let's talk about Ward versus pretense. Right, his mic is bugging out. No. Yeah, I can hear you now, but your mic is bugging out, and I'm not done. I'm not done. You got a whole 20 minutes to yourself without me saying a word. When have you ever heard what undisputed title fight, whether we talking about Shields versus Marshall or Taylor versus Ramirez or the upcoming Usyk versus Fury, when have you ever heard of an undisputed title fight, especially in the four belt era, negotiated on the pretense that there's no guarantee to the fighter? There's no guarantee.
Every single one of Errol Spence Jr.'s opponents before Terrence Crawford got a guarantee, but Terrence doesn't get anything. And I'm intended to believe that they're negotiating in good faith when not but 12 months ago you said you don't think this fight is going to make any money anyway because of piracy. Well, piracy wasn't an issue when you made a fight with Danny. And piracy wasn't an issue when you made a fight with Ugas and Sean and Mikey. But when it's Terrence, oh, all of a sudden we're scared that people are going to steal the pay-per-view, so we're not going to offer you any money. No, you made him an offer you didn't expect him to take. And guys like KO are using the excuse that, oh, well, well, Terrence was negotiating with Black Prime at the same time. Yeah, so fucking what? The PBC offered Errol to Canelo before they even went into talks for Terrence because they didn't want to fight Terrence. It's kind of obvious. What is your retort that, oh, because this Canelo is supposed to be different? It means the same thing. You keep choosing other people over Terrence, even though you have a choice. The examples you used, those are tournaments. That doesn't boil down to choice. How the World Boxing Super Series, Regis and all the guys that he fought in there, Usyk and all the guys that he fought in there, that doesn't boil down to choice. That's a tournament format. How the fuck is that the same thing as Errol always choosing to fight somebody else? Always. Even now, you have a choice. You could go to the WBC right now and tell them, Yo, you know what, I want to fight Terrence instead. I bet you they'll let you because you about to fight at 154. This ain't even a welterweight contest. It ain't no titles on the line. If you wanted to fight Terrence Crawford right now, you could, but you don't. You fighting Keith because you're not coming back to welterweight. And I'll put money on that. $50 says he don't come back to welterweight. $50. I bet you if he beat Keith, he don't move back down. It's your turn. All right, a couple of things, brother, that you that you spoke on that that, that we want to that we want to get to. So number one, my point is not that he was negotiating with them at the same time was in bad faith. The point was that he told one side everything and told the other side nothing. So you you tried that shit, but that ain't what I said, bro. So next time you want to try to rebut some shit, actually rebuttal the point that I'm actually making. Talking to two people at the same time, there's no issue with that. Hell, Tank Davis was obviously talking to Hector Luis Garcia and Ryan Garcia at the same time. But guess what? Both of them fucking knew it because he was negotiating in good faith. So the point, again, for all y'all in the chat and for Ring IQ since he couldn't keep up or something, the point is not that Terrence Bud Crawford was talking to PBC and BLK Prime at the same time that that makes it bad faith. The point is that he was talking to PBC and BLK Prime at the same time and telling PBC nothing about negotiations with BLK Prime while telling BLK Prime everything with negotiations that he had going on with PBC. That's the point. Try to retort that. What I'm at the point that I'm actually making. Now you're talking about. Now you. Now you. No, bro. Let me finish. Let me finish talking, bro. Let me. Let me finish. No, I'm talking about when I'm done. You can retort it, bro. Don't cut me off. I didn't cut you off. I thought we were having a respectful debate here. When I'm done, bro, I'll go on mute just like last time, and I'll shut the fuck up and let you talk, bro. But if I'm gonna be here, then I'm gonna. I'm gonna get to talk, or I can just dip off, bro. Now, with the Terrence Crawford and what you bought up Earl Spence and Keith Thurman, what you failed to realize and what y'all don't want to talk about is that the only reason, and I'm going to prove this to everybody in the chat, whether y'all like it or not, because I know y'all don't fuck with Earl. I know where I'm at. I know this is a road game, but I'm still fucking it up anyway, bro. Fucking up everything y'all thought was going to happen. But anyway, the only reason Earl Spence Jr. is fighting Keith Thurman is because of Terrence Burrell Crawford. Now, knock out. How can you prove that to us, Knockout? Because you saying some bullshit. Very easy work. Keith Thurman fought Mario Barrios in February. Earl Spence fought motherfucking Yodinus Ugas in April. After he fought Yodinus Ugas, did they go into negotiations with Keith Thurman? No, the fuck they didn't. They went into negotiations with Terrence Bud Crawford. They negotiated with that man May, June, July, August, September, all the way to October when Terrence Crawford announced his motherfucking fight with David Abanesian. Now, before I go any further, let me just say again, because he keeps bringing up this no guarantee shit. There's no guarantee. This I thought we were in the business of wanting fights. If I got one fighter that got no guarantee, and I got another fighter that got no guarantee, why the fuck am I going to give another fighter an excuse for not signing a motherfucking contract? And he keeps talking about Earl Spence opponent, where every other Earl Spence opponent had a motherfucking guarantee. But what he's leaving now, because he tried to accuse me of leaving shit out and leaving troops out and shit. But what he's leaving out is that Earl Spence also 
got a guarantee in every one of his other fights that he ever had before Terrence Crawford. So is the PBC fucking over their own golden boy Earl Spence by offering him no guarantee also? Or they only fucking over Bud Crawford? So when both fighters get offered the same structure of deal, and one of them don't sign, but one of them do sign, one of them don't agree, but one of them do agree, I'm not making no motherfucking excuses for the dude that didn't agree. He a motherfucking duck, because you had the same goddamn agreement that this dude had. I didn't forget where I was, though. Let's keep going on the October shit. Terrence Bud Crawford, because the point we making, remember everybody, in case y'all too slow to keep up, the point we making is that Earl Spence is fighting Keith Thurman because Terrence Bud Crawford ducked him. Now, Terrence Bud Crawford announced his David Avenesian fight on October 20th. He negotiated with Earl Spence six months. It wasn't until like November 10th, or it might have been the 11th, somebody feel free to fact check me. The WBC didn't order Earl Spence to fight Keith Thurman until November of 2022. On November 21st or 22nd, the Earl Spence and his team went to the WBA making sure that they were okay with him fighting Keith Thurman so he wouldn't get stripped by the WBA. This was back in November. So everybody use your motherfucking common sense. If their team is already going to motherfucking WBA asking can they fight Keith Thurman, don't you think that means that they might already have a fight agreement? And if that was always the plan, why didn't they order the fight and why didn't they negotiate with Keith Thurman for the six months that they was negotiating with Terrence Bud Crawford? They didn't start talking to Keith until after Terrence Bud Crawford announced his motherfucking fight. If Terrence Bud Crawford would have signed on the dotted line like we all wanted him to, so we can get this fight so either I can be right and Earl beat Bud ass like I think he gonna do, or maybe Ring IQ is right and, and Terrence gonna beat Earl ass. I don't know, everybody got their opinion until the motherfucking fight happened. If Terrence Crawford would have signed the fight Earl Spence, Earl Spence would have never went into negotiations with Keith Thurman at all, bro. The only reason that they even talked about a fight was because Bud Crawford, and this is the funniest shit, the man Earl Spence told us on December 17th during the Michelle Rivera and, um, damn, I got to go, my son. I got to go get my haircut. Here I come, hold on. That man told us during the Michelle Rivera and Frank Martin fight that he had a fight announcement. Now, what y'all think that fight announcement was going to be if he was ordered to fight the WBC, ordered to fight Keith by the WBC, he went to the WBA for approval in November, then by December 17th, he said he was about to announce a fight because, but he got in a car wreck, and so this shit got pushed back. So, He's doing the same fight that he's been working on since November. But y'all are cool with Terrence Bud Crawford pulling out of negotiations, not signing the fight, announcing another fight in October. But you want to get mad at Earl for going through with a fight that he only have to fight because of fucking Terrence Bud Crawford ducking him. That's all I got. If you want a real debate and you want more smoke, now you got to come see me, bro. This you shit was real easy, you real easy work. Enjoy the rest of your day, homie. You can't fuck with me, dog. Y'all boys be easy, man. All right.